Let's create an EC2 instance. So from the EC2 console, just click on Launch Instance, and we want to use the deep running AMI, which will have Jupyter installed and all that good stuff. So we can find it in the marketplace. And as you know, there are different versions. So let's pick the latest version, which is V26, which has all the latest tools and frameworks. And here I want to use the Ubuntu uh, edition. So that's what I select. Next, we're going to select an instance type. And uh, the Detectron model is a compute heavy model. So let's grab a GPU instance for this. Uh, yeah, P32XL. Sounds about right. This one has one GPU, it should be enough. Then uh, you can leave all that stuff default. I like to have uh, a power user role allowing me to do all kinds of things. So um, that's probably not needed here, but uh, yeah, make sure you have the right permissions. Storage is probably important because we're going to download the Coco dataset, which is, uh, which is quite large, uh, tens of gigabytes if I remember right. Um, so let's make sure, yeah, we have plenty of storage, okay. And why not use SSD storage as well? Uh, you don't have to, but you know, I'm not paying my bills, so I can, uh, <laughs> I can tweak all those things. Tags, of course, we want to have a tag, so let's call this um, Detectron2 Demo, a security group, and here I will only need I will only need SSH and Jupyter Notebook access. So that's already created. If you haven't won, well, well then you just need SSH, right? TCP 22. And um, I'm going to redirect Jupyter port uh, to 8888. Uh, so you need to have that one open as well. Okay. Review on launch. Launch. Select your key pair. Yes, that's the one I want. And launch. And this will take a few minutes, so uh, let's pause the video and uh, I'll see you when the instance is up. After a few minutes, the instance is up, so now let's connect to it. I'm using SSH here, uh, setting up port redirection from instance port 8888 to local port 8000. And this will allow me to connect from my Mac using my uh, local browser to the remote Jupyter notebook running on the EC2 instance. Okay, so let's just connect now. Okay, and this is the EC2 instance I've started. And now I just need to start a notebook. Okay, like that. And if I grab that URL with the token and I open this, okay, and remember I need to change 8888 to 8000. I should be redirected to the notebook running on the EC2 instance. Okay, so cool technique. Now, the next step is to grab the Detectron notebook from the, uh, from, uh, the Colab website. And the only thing you need to do here is just download it, right? So just download the the IPython notebook, not the Python notebook. Okay, so just download this one, and then you can upload it to uh, your EC2 instance, just like this, okay? So in the interest of time, I've done all of this, and I've created a Detectron 2 folder so that everything is the, in the right place, and here is the notebook, right? So this is the exact one I uh, downloaded from Colab. Okay, so let's open it. As you will see, I've done just a few changes to make it run on the deep learning AMI. I've highlighted my changes, and um, this notebook is available in uh, one of my GitLab repos. The URL is in the description, so you can just grab my version and run it directly on the deep learning AMI. Okay, so this is just one of those cells saying, "Hey, this is running on uh, deep learning AMI v26 with the Python 3 kernel." Okay. So I'm not gonna explain all of those cells. Uh, you can go through uh, the actual tutorial and there's plenty of good information there. I'm just going to highlight the changes that I've made, okay? So let's run those cells. And in the interest of time, again, I've run those cells before so that all downloads have been, uh, have been performed. So install some dependencies. Uh, we actually need to download OpenCV 
which is not present by default on the deep learning MI. So this is one of those changes I've done. Then we need to clone um, the repo, which again I've done before. And um, if you're trying this maybe on your local machine, make sure you have a recent version of uh, the GNU compiler, GCC, because this will actually compile some, some stuff. Okay, so uh, if you see GCC errors in there, this is probably because you have um, an older GCC version. Uh, another package I need to install is the Google Collab package because there are some cells in the notebook use a proprietary uh, method from that package. Okay, so let's just install this. Okay, and then uh, as usual, it's good practice to restart the kernel to make sure all the imports are actually taken into account. So let's do this. Restart, clear everything, and we'll just resume from uh, yeah this place okay so import libraries and the first step is just showing you how to use a pre-trained detectron model so grab an image okay here it is and then use a segmentation pre-trained model to segment the image and we can visualize this stuff Okay, again, there's lots to explain here, but uh, you'll find lots of good information in the tutorial. I just want to show you that this runs fine on the deep learning MI. Okay, so we see segmentation here. And then the next step is training a data set. So this is the balloon data set because guess what? It has lots of balloon pictures. Download and zip it. Right, some utility methods here to load images. So here's an image from the data set. Okay, so lots of balloon pictures. And this is one of the annotated images, right? So uh, we haven't actually predicted anything here. Okay, so balloon images. And now we're going to take that uh, segmentation model and fine tune it on the, on the balloon class. Okay, so this is where, you know, you'll be happy to have a GPU instance because it takes a while if you're gonna run this on CPU, okay? So we can see this is training. It's pretty fast. Should take, uh, should take a minute or so. Okay, so this okay. is done. Now, of course, we wanna try this. Okay, so grab uh, some, uh, some image from the validation data set and predict them right and they look pretty good okay segmentation is very neat as you can see so it looks like the model uh, worked okay we can see some metrics the uh, the ap metrics which is a um, um, a good metric for uh, segmentation models and then we can quickly see other models so here's a fun one called key point detection Okay, so this is actually focusing on detecting key points for humans. Okay, this is also called pose detection. Um, so, you know, where are the arms, where are the legs, where, where are the eyes, etc. So all the key points of the human body. And we can try panoptic segmentation, which is uh, really trying to segment everything in a picture. So every pixel is absolutely associated with an instance, so the sky, uh, the grass, the person, uh, and the, the balloons, etc., etc. And then we can try the same thing on a video, which is really cool. So uh, this grabs this video from YouTube. Okay, so it's uh, road traffic, apparently. And one of the changes here is uh, you need to install FFmpeg. Okay, uh, which will uh, help us encode the video. It's not present by default on the deep learning MI. Um, on the next cell, I commented out a few things that were unnecessary, so let's not worry about that. And uh, one of the changes you need to do here, unless you have an FFmpeg version that supports X264, uh, you need to change this. Okay, and to make a long story short, 
Um, there are some licensing issues around uh, the uh, X264 codec, which prevents, uh, prevents it from being embedded into FFmpeg. So either you have an FFmpeg version that you built yourself and it's fine, or you don't and you have to do this change, which I've done here. Okay, so in, uh, in that demo script that we're going to run in the next cell, you actually have to replace uh, X264 by MPEG. Okay, just edit that file and that's all you need to do here. Okay, once you've done this uh, tiny change, you can run the next cell and uh, basically this demo script will look at the video and uh, use that segmentation model on each frame. Okay, so this takes um, one minute and 40 seconds. I'm just going to pause the video and save that time. Once this cell is complete after a little less than two minutes, we successfully process the video. So we can check that our MPEG file is actually here. Okay, and again, I commented out the last few, uh, the last few lines because uh, I'm just going to uh, SCP that file to my local machine. Okay, so this is what I've done. Just grab this video from the instance, and if I open it, this is what I see, and this is really nice. Right, so we see this uh, segmented video, and there's just the beginning of it. Right, it wasn't fully processed because that takes a little bit too long. But so by by tweaking the script, I'm sure you can actually uh, segment um, arbitrary length videos. Okay, one last time, and this is it. Right, taking a frame at a time and uh, using segmentation and rebuilding a video from it. Okay, very nice. So just a few minor changes, but uh, you know, if uh, <laughs> if you're not quite sure what you're doing, this can take a while to figure out. So now you can just grab the notebook and do it yourself. Well, that's it for today. See you next time with uh, another exciting topic. Bye bye.